Today is Friday, September 29th. We're going to go around the bases with our MLB insider at the New York Post. He is John Heyman. John, how you doing, man? I'm good. Other than it uh, looks and feels like the world's ending out there, we're, we're doing okay. We're hanging in there. The world is not ending, by the way. I can report that. We are we are experiencing a lot of rain up here in New York. Oh my God! Um, it never ends. It never ends. It's been two straight weekends now. Uh, but John, we are approaching here at the end of the baseball season. Uh, last weekend of the regular season. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, obviously, heading into the off season, heading into the playoffs. But the top story I want to talk about is you wrote about Juan Su- Juan Soto, and the Padres star is going into the last year uh, before he hits free agency in, in next season. And the Padres obviously had a had a tough year. Um, but when you're looking at Juan Soto and how great of a player he is, is there a possibility that the Padres could be looking to move the star and gain some assets back? Because it just did not work out when they built this huge star-studded team of all these players that were on that roster. I mean, there's going to be a lot of speculation about Juan Soto and is he going to be traded unless the Padres come out and say they're absolutely not trading him. And I'm going to begin or be one of the first to start this speculation. Uh, You know, it's certainly something for them to consider. I'm not sure it's in their DNA to ever sell. Uh, They have spent an incredible amount this year, third highest payroll. I mean, obviously the Mets outspent them, but, you know, certainly the Mets can afford it. San Diego. You know, we'll see how they can afford it. Uh, they're hanging in there, I guess, at this point financially, but uh, uh, certainly lost money this year. I don't think there's any question about that. And they've got, you know, four huge stars, not not counting Darvish, but four huge positional stars. And really, I mean, you're not trading Bogerts. He's got uh, full no trade. You're not trading Machado, full no trade. Tatis has a full no trade, at least this year so that's not happening and i'm not sure people will take him on even though he's like dwight yeah. evans in right field but uh, certainly he had that uh, ped situation a little while back so soto is tradable he does not have that no trade stuff he's not signed a long-term deal as we know he turned down what was it 440 million something like that with the nats reportedly we don't know if there was deferrals or what in there but one year to go, and, you know, executives are suggesting now as we're beginning this speculation, it'd be like a Mookie Betts trade where you'd get that kind of um, haul back. And we say haul, it should be somewhat of a haul, but obviously the Red Sox are not probably thrilled with what they got back from Mookie Betts. But, you yeah. know, uh, you'd get a, a decent amount back, but certainly not what they gave up for him. They gave up five big-time prospects or young players to get Juan Soto should be able to get something pretty good back if they decide to do it. But, you know, I mean, obviously it's been a disappointing year for the Padres, but they should be better than this. And they're going to probably convince themselves to run back at at it and see if they can do better over the next 162. My guess, but if he does get traded, the the Mets and the Yankees do make sense. The Mets have the money. The Yankees need a left-handed bat. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up those two teams, and and there's two responses here I have about this. If the Padres do decide to run it back, it's not like the Dodgers aren't going anywhere, and the Diamondbacks are a talented you know team that is up and coming. It feels like as well, so it's it's a tough NL West to try to compete out there, and and I understand the the wild card's a different story, but that would be interesting to see if they do decide to run it back, and. You bet you weigh that balance kind of like the Angels tried to with Shohei Otani. Are you going to keep him or are you going to trade him for assets? Juan Soto is is having a phenomenal year for for all intents and purposes again. And he is only 24, going to be 25 years old before he hits free agency. You mentioned the Mets and Yankees. If you were to balance those two teams or if you were to pick one of those two teams to be the favorite if he was to be traded, who has a better shot at actually landing the superstar that is Juan Soto? Yeah, I mean, I think he fits the Yankees because they need a left-handed bat. And, you know, only one team's going to get Bellinger. Only one team's going to get Otani. You know, at the moment, doesn't feel like the Yankees are favored for Otani. Bellinger does make sense, but, uh, you know, wouldn't hurt to have two left-handed bats, I guess. Um, although they're both outfielders for the most part. Bellinger can play some first base, too, uh, very well, in, in, in fact. But, again, my my – bigger thing is is the Padres now uh, you know beyond all their issues this year Hader and Snell are free agents so 
you know, they may not be great next year, but again, got to be in their DNA. You know, the Angels ownership did not want to trade Otani logically, would have made, made sense to trade him, didn't do it. And uh, it feels like the Padres, a team that's going to want to win, even though we're hearing about how they're going to be cutting back, I, I still think this is not a great chance of happening. Okay. That's something that we're going to be, uh, a lot of fans are going to be watching to see what happens with that Padres team and that roster, obviously. Um, and if they do decide to run it back, that a lot of people will be picking them to be favorites again next year. Uh, John, let's go to our next topic here. We're obviously, like I said, we're going into the playoffs here soon. Last, last week into the regular season. Uh, can you give me a couple teams that you see are really poised to make a run at it here in the playoffs? Well, let me first uh, uh, mention that I might, if anyone saw my predictions in the uh, in the in the uh, preseason uh, post, uh, they probably won't listen to this. But I'm going to go on the fact that I think I am due now to make some good <laughs> team predictions. Uh, I feel like the Orioles and the Phillies are poised right now. The Orioles, John Means is back. You've got young pitchers, uh, Bradish and Rodriguez pitching great. Kramer's pitching well too. So their rotation is set up as well as anybody's. We were questioning going into the season whether the Orioles had enough in the rotation. They did sign Kyle Gibson, who's been a nice veteran stabilizer, but he's like the fifth guy at this moment, at least in my mind. They they picked up a guy, obviously a good pitcher, Jack uh, Flaherty, at the deadline, and he's probably in the bullpen uh, for the playoffs. That's how good their rotation looks right now. So I like the Orioles going in. Uh, in, the, in the other league, you know what? As a dark horse, I kind of like Philadelphia. Last year, nobody expected them to get to the World Series. They did do it. That lineup is devastating. You know, yeah. you've got Harper now. We saw that uh, bad call the check swing yesterday, but he's now firing basically all their guys, with the exception of Rio Muto, and really doing what you'd expect or hope yeah. them to do. And that lineup is outstanding. So I feel like better about them than I did last year, certainly when they just kind of sneaked in beating Milwaukee at the last second and got to the World Series somehow. So I kind of like those two teams. Obviously, the Braves are fantastic. Just swept the Cubs. They're the favorite. Will not be shocked if they win. Certainly, Freed's finger in injury is an issue. Morton mm. going to be out for the first round. Issues, but they just keep on rolling. They are outstanding. And we know the Dodgers are also terrific, especially offensively. So many pitching questions right now. You've got in their rotation, kids. Miller is doing well. Pepio's doing well. Yeah. Shaw managing to do okay despite a shoulder consideration or issue. Um, so many, so many pitching injuries, though. Obviously, Urias is going to be out. Uh, they've lost Gonsolin. They lost May. Bueller's not coming back. I'm probably leaving out three or four others, but I mean, you can't count out the Dodgers. And certainly, Milwaukee's got the pitching nationally to me is the most interesting. They've got yes. a lot going on right there right now. We thought the American League was better this year. But right now, it feels like the top teams are in the National League. I was just about to say, John, the AL we thought about coming into the year, yeah. if you look at it before the season, the AL East was supposed to be a gauntlet. And yet the Orioles were win that division. The Rays, obviously, ever since the Wander Franco situation, it felt like it's not been great. And they had a ton of injuries, their rotation. Um, but it's it's not a, a not a great AL because the Rangers were so good for a lot of the year, but again, have struggled a lot towards the end of the year. Yeah, very uh, up and down. The Rangers very, up and, very down. up and down, very talented, can't rule them out, certainly. Um, Houston. I mean, who there. would have thought they are? And they've got the nucleus with Altuve and Bregman, all those guys, Alvarez, but they did go two and seven uh, recently against the two worst teams in baseball, Kansas City and Oakland. You know, wonder a little bit about them too. I, you know, I feel better right now, despite the injuries uh, with the Dodgers and the, the Braves. And right now I think the Phillies are on a roll and they're looking good. Like yeah. I said, in the American league, I'm going Orioles, Texas, very dangerous though, I think. Yeah. Oh, you mean, you mean the Phillies? Excuse you said Texas. I'm American yeah. league. I'm American going, league. Okay. American, American league. I'm okay. going Orioles. And uh, National really League, dangerous. dangerous. National League, uh, I'm going to say uh, I kind of like the Phillies right at the moment. I mean, yeah. the Braves are obviously the favorite. Uh, I can't you can't get away from that. They've been incredible. They've wrapped up the best record. Their offense is setting records. Acuna, amazing, going to be the MVP. Um, you know, National League looks pretty good though right now with the. Uh, you got the Milwaukee with the pitching. 
uh, and certainly the Braves, great, and the Phillies lineup. And, you know, I like Wheeler, and and even though Nola hasn't had the great year, I like him as well. Yeah, Phillies obviously have that playoff experience going off over that run last year. Uh, it's going to be a fun race to watch in both leagues, obviously. Uh, sticking in the National League and sticking in the NL East, let's talk about the Mets. Um, the manager situation. Obviously, we've talked about this with David Stearns now running the baseball operations. What is Buck going to do with one year left on his current deal? Um, how do you how are you seeing this situation playing out? Uh, are the Mets going to look to bring in a new manager as they head into a new direction with a new head of baseball operations? Yeah, I, I hate to be wishy washy on this, but it does look like it could go, could go either way. The conventional wisdom would that be that David Stearns comes in, he does not have any prior relationship with Buck Showalter. Nothing against Buck. I mean, David Stearns is only thirty eight years old. He's been in Milwaukee. He's not uh, bon vivant getting out there and meeting everybody. As I don't think he knows Buck Showalter. So conventional wisdom is he want to bring in his own guy. Uh, but then he might want to look and see how, how does Buck do. Obviously, Buck's been a four-time manager of the year. I don't believe this is his fault. I don't know that anybody would think that this is his fault. And, uh, you know, maybe he'd like to see how the veteran manager does with this team for one year and play out the contract. So there is a possibility that he could stay. We've suggested here, at least I have, that I, I think that he deserves to stay and this isn't his fault. So I'd like to see him uh, remain the manager. That said, I, I think it's, I would say, more likely than not, although you could put it at 50-50, that they move on. And uh, if they do, though, I think you've got to look at experienced managers, right? It's New York, yeah. right? What managers have done well? Buck Showalter had that great year last year, even if this year didn't do go well. Terry Collins generally had a successful tenure in New York, and he had previously managed in Houston with the Angels. Bobby Valentine certainly had a wealth of managing experience. He was successful. They've tried some young guys or new guys and that has not worked mickey calloway being the most obvious disaster. example but there have disaster been, there have been several yeah there have been a few and they have not worked and uh same in the gm here are they bringing in a gm it's really baseball president of the baseball operations who's really successful in milwaukee is seven years four years in a row making the playoffs last year missing by one game they're going to make it again although he was not doing that gm duty this year uh, but with his players and, the, you know, the prospects look good in Milwaukee. They have one of the top five farm systems now for the first time in a, quite a while. So uh, I believe in David Stearns. It should be up to David Stearns. I think it will be up to David Stearns. But one word of warning, if you don't keep Buck, need to get somebody with experience. And certainly this. It's going to be a lot of speculation. I began that long, weeks ago with Craig Council, who is a free agent, that rare great manager free agent in Milwaukee. He is a Milwaukee product. He lives in Milwaukee year-round. I think he might be the only manager in the major leagues who lives year-round in the town in which he manages, which is yeah. interesting. So uh, they are obviously got a good team in Milwaukee. They're headed to the playoffs. Not going to be easy to get him, but certainly they have the wherewithal to try to do it. And, I do believe he feels he's underpaid at 3.5 million. So, you know, that's the one to really keep an eye on. And I, I don't know that the situation with Buck will be resolved immediately. Could be if he decides, you know what, it's not going to work with Buck. But, you know, if he's just going to say to himself, you know, if we can get counsel, that's great. And if we don't, we'll stick with Buck. So it may not be resolved immediately with Buck. We shall see. Maybe it's cleaner if it is. But if it's not Buck, you know, the other speculation would be we talked about the Padres, Bob Melvin. Mm -hmm. You know, he's obviously been a very good manager, did not work this year for whatever reason. You know, you wonder he's got the connection with A.J. Hinch. He's in Detroit. He's got new bosses. I'm now speculating on guys who have jobs, but, you know, we got we, it's got to be somebody with experience. I do like Walt Weiss, who's a coach with the Braves right now, uh, bench coach. I, I don't think he'd leave for any, just any job, but he is the product. I believe it's Rockland County, Suffern, New York, and uh, he did manage previously with the Rockies, which is not really – you know, it's it's a good apprenticeship, but not doesn't give you much of a chance. You know, of course, there's Eric Chavez uh, on the Mets bench, who I think will be a major league manager at some point. But again, I think experience would be important here for this job. So I think they got to look at Council. You got to look at Melvin Hinch, somebody like that who's got a wealth of experience. If you're going to move on from Buck, yeah. It again, uh, 
I it doesn't feel like it's going any way. I think the Mets are kind of keeping it under under wraps here, and then we'll see what happens. Obviously, uh, that that could be a Black Monday, could be next week, but we'll see that situation develop. Uh, let's wrap all this up, John, and bring it home. Disappointing team of the week. Who you got? I got to go with the Cubs, and uh, wow. I mean, they're right now uh, got less than a 50% chance to beat out the Marlins. The Marlins, who have a, about a negative 50 run differential, the Cubs about a positive 100. And uh, right now, uh, the Marlins are a half game up. They've got the uh, they've got a lead in that game that was uh, postponed last night, so they have to come back and play Monday. Won't be good for them, but uh, you know, they've got that advantage. Uh, they are up, up by a run in that game with men on pace. And, uh, you know, it's kind of shocking that they're a half game up with a, a run differential difference of a, almost 150, about 150 runs. And the Cubs just got swept. And of course, you know, they had a tough finish here. Now they're going to Milwaukee, which probably doesn't love the Cubs, not going to do them any favors, even though they're already in, uh, Played the Braves, lost three straight, the first two by one run. The bullpen let them down. They dropped the ball in right field. And, uh, you know, if the Cubs don't make it, it's going to be quite a disappointment. They rallied into the deadline, did not be, did not become the seller that we expected, held on to Bellinger and Stroman and all their other pieces. And they certainly are giving it, gave it a run. They, they played well, but is it going to be well enough? The uh, Marlins, amazing. You, you got to give them credit for being yeah. right now having the advantage with a negative 50 run differential. Uh, they win those close games, 32 one-run wins. Skip Schumacher done a great job down there, but uh, kind of feel for my friends on the north side of Chicago right now. Yeah, that, that drop by Suzuki this week, I was just like, oh, man, it just felt like, oh, no, that's Cubs right there. That just... Yeah, it was a it was a rough week for the Cubs. Uh, obviously, like we said this weekend, we still got to close out a couple of games. The Marlins did have a suspended game, like you mentioned, so that'll be interesting to see if that is a very important situation on Monday when they when they resume that suspended game. John, I appreciate you as always for going around the bases with us as we wrap up the baseball season. Uh, I I'm sure we'll talk again, hopefully in the next week or so. But appreciate you as always, man. All right, sounds good, Ryan. Let's just hop this. Hope this uh, rain stops. It's it's getting worse as we're doing this. <laughs> I'm not, I think I'm going to close the blinds. Uh, it's, it's brutal <laughs> out there. Can't even look. I can't imagine. Are they going to play today, tomorrow, the next day, then much less Monday? Um, I mean, it's oh. been raining for a week at this point. And what, we had one good day. I can't remember what day that was, but we had one day Wednesday. where there was a little sun. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. It feels like it's been forever, though. Uh, stay yeah. safe out there in New York. All right. <laughs> Appreciate all right. you, John. You too. See you later.